All right, you guys, welcome back to the final episode of a Clockwork Leyline series. Well, this is the first episode of the final episode. Not confusing at all. Anyways, we're going to be playing Flowers Falling in the Mist. Really excited. This is the final game in the trilogy, and we're going to see how this goes. Uh, I did want to analyze a little bit of this home screen real quick, and then we're going to jump into it. So, of course, we have Koga here. Uh, we have his sister, who I guess is also Koga. Because he's Mitsuyoshi and she's uh, Mitsu Michiru. There we go. I was about to say something else. Don't worry about it. Uh, so we have this mysterious girl with kind of this blue aesthetic going on. I see a kind of a theme because our sister is blue. She is blue. Uh, she looks a little bit like Rito. I wonder if that's uh, any coincidence. They kind of have a similar hair color going on. Uh, we have this girl kind of fading in the background. I don't know if that's maybe Crawl or maybe this other girl's Crawl. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if one of those is the principle in the past. Anyways, uh, we have Kotaro and uh, Matsuki. That's her name. <laughs> I I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names, so if I take a second to remember a name, like I genuinely like do remember it. I'm just having trouble recalling. Uh, so they're kind of looking away from each other, a little bit mysterious, almost like their fates are kind of intertwined, you know? Like they're looking away from each other, but they're kind of connected in the same way, back to back. Uh, we have the principal over here scheming with the ermine. No surprise, Ninomai, of course, has something to do with this, I think. Uh, and just look at it, Ninomai is looking directly at us. Like, please tell me that has some meaning to it, okay? She's looking kind of evil a little bit. It looks like that uh, final CG we got of them. And then, the most mysterious of all, we have Muko kind of looking blissful. She looks like at peace, like kind of when you're dying, you know, when you, you know, you're set in a casket and they send you out to the river or something. That's kind of what she's got going on. So I don't really like that. <laughs> I don't like the implication. Oh, what just happened? Did I start? Okay, I guess I just started. <laughs> I literally just clicked the screen. Uh, I didn't even click start, but okay. We're just going to go ahead and jump into it, I guess. I walk through the lush greenery of a forest. It's dark and dense like a scene from a picture book where a child will be wandering around, lost and frightened. <laughs> Trying to chase off this baseless sense of unease I'm feeling, I think back to the telephone call that came a few days ago. Libra Lapis Lazul Academy. Time was passing by peacefully in the school that I founded, in spite of this peculiar and magical incident that occurred from time to time. It was early in the afternoon of another quiet day when I answered the phone in the principal's office. So, I was wondering if you could take care of her. Ooh, new character time? Can <laughs> Okay, so we're getting an introduction to Lazarus? Okay. I wonder who the daughter is. Is it gonna be, um, Fujito? Uh, no, it can't be Fujito, because we, we, well, of everything we learned about Fujito, so who would it be? Is it gonna be the other girl on the home screen? I'm kind of wondering if the one faded in the background was Crow, and then the other girl is going to be maybe we're going to get introduced to? <笑>私の手には Positive that she isn't. The girl responsible for that simply does not advance her powers. もちろん、それだけではありません。やめた使用人たちに見られた現象ですが、最初は娘に対して怯えていたのに、ある日突然人が変わったように娘を操り始めるのです。どうしたのかと聞くと、怖がらないでと言われたら。this is what I thought was gonna happen with Michiru. I thought, like, you know, because she controls. I thought she was gonna control fire, but, you know, apparently not. 
アンジ魔術あいえでもそれは術を学んでいなければかけられないはず。Okay, interesting. Not to mention that certain herbs are necessary as a catalyst. This should be impossible since she's never gone outside the mansion. Which means that she's managed to do that purely with her own mana. もう限界なのです。身の回りで起きる奇妙な現象にも突然人が変わる使用人たちにもどうか私たち夫婦を救ってくださいクラール・ラズリット希代のマギエよ Wait, what? Please save me and my wife. Oh, okay. I thought he was implying that his wife was Kral, and that really confused me for a second. I'm like, isn't this Kral? But if we read into this, she's a, she obviously uses fire, maybe uses hypnosis. Maybe this is what happened at the school 20 years ago. I'm thinking that's what's gonna happen here. Uh, does the clock tower look different to you guys?、Uh, I'm assuming this is at least 20 years ago, right?、Uh, I, I think this looks a little bit different. The clock tower, at least. I don't know. I don't remember it having those spires, but I might just have a terrible memory. She's probably, no, definitely a Maggie. And she doesn't know how to use her own power. At this rate, not only will she continue to be ostracized by her family, her lack of control will also bring about tragedy. Keeping that in mind, I decide to take her in my care. Oh, that's a nice mansion. Emerging from the forest deep in the mountains, I reach a stately and magnificent mansion. However, it seems that the girl is not kept in this extravagant building, but is instead forced to live in a detached one a distance away. After leading me to the outbuilding and unlocking the door, the servant shoves the key at, at me and runs away as if she were fleeing for her life. I can't blame them, but I pity her for having to live all by herself like this. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. No, show me who it is! I want to know! I need to know. Okay, this is the truth of 20 years past. I don't know why it's not showing this. I'm sorry. You are not alone as clockwork. Hell yeah, they got a cool intro song. Okay, I unfortunately cannot show this. I don't know why, but、uh, I'm gonna go ahead and watch it real quick. Uh, okay, there was a lot going on in that.、Um, wow, okay, Th that, that looked awesome. If that's what I could expect from this, I'm gonna be happy.、Uh, holy shit, <laughs> that's all I can say about that.、Uh, I'm kind of concerned though, because they showed Muko getting Thanos snapped. Like she just like, disappeared, like all the other you know, people that.、Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. And then there was a mysterious guy there at the end that. I don't know. And then they were talking about illuminating the borderline. Like, I think this is really going to be the culmination of everything that's happened. I mean, obviously, it's the third, you know, final one. It's, of course, it's going to be the culmination. But they really sold me on it, okay? Wow.、Uh, I, I feel bad. I don't know why it doesn't show up in. It just gives me, like, a white screen when I'm recording it. I have no idea why. Uh, but we are going to be starting episode one here. And so here, you use this formula. I faintly hear the familiar voice of my teacher amidst the sounds of pens running across paper. Oh, I'm in class. I know, that's how I feel too, after you just showed me that awesome opening. Like, it, it showed so much. Like, I'm sure you could find, like, somewhere on YouTube where they show it.、Uh, maybe I'm just not allowed to show it. I don't know. My vision is blurry. Vaguely recalling that I dozed off, I'm unable to completely wake myself up. I didn't realize I was this sleep deprived. The teacher's gonna yell at me if I don't get up. My brain just isn't cooperating. <sighs> Struggling to stifle a yawn, I shut my eyes tightly and reopened them. Hmm. Still half asleep, I noticed some words written in my notebook. We might never meet again. The sentence I'm staring at makes me feel uncomfortable. What is this? This isn't from math class, is it? I'm pretty sure I heard the teacher mentioning a formula. 
We might never meet again. And here it says, I have to save him. These clearly aren't mathematical formulas. Did, did I... I'm, I'm thinking about him again. What am I doing? Okay, so I'm assuming we're talking about uh, Kotaro here, right? I, I have to save him. Started by the ringing of the bell. Now I'm fully awake. Yoshi, Person I see at the front of the classroom is my homeroom teacher. He's responsible for English. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't write anything down. My notebook is completely blank, even though those two strange sentences were supposed to be there. <sighs> yeah, I'm like, why Why would you have created English? Why would you create such a complicated language for no reason? Why is red and red? They sound exactly the same, but you can spell those completely differently. Why would you create that? It doesn't make any sense. Dream, huh? Way more importantly, what happened in that class? <laughs> I didn't take a single note. That's okay, we don't care about it anyways. No, nobody actually, like, goes to class, really. Uh, most of the time, we're just kind of solving mysteries, and that's how it should be. Did I unconsciously translate a sentence that came up during class? What did I write down again? I can't remember at all. Damn it. Jana! Ah! Uh, we'll definitely not see them again. There's some side character. Who cares? I didn't realize because I was out of it the entire time, but it looks like the that was the last, uh, our last class for the day. I absentmindedly watch as our classmates leave the room into their little, their own little groups. See, Eng English is such a complicated language. I'm having a hard time reading it without failing. You know? Why would you create English, my guy? Oh, Kotaro. Why are you here? I bet I'll be right. Okay, that okay, I was really confused for a second. I'm like, wait a minute, Kotaro, how did you get here? I'm like, are we dreaming? Up until now, he'd always call out to me whenever I was in a daze. I mean, we kind of lost our best friend. Like, look. No, I, I just feel bad. I mean, I'm hoping we can, like, figure out how we can get him back, or or what's gonna happen with that. If, if Maybe we just don't, but I'm thinking they're implying we will be able to kind of, uh, help, help him in some way? I'm not even sure what to say about that. Karasuma Kotaro. The first friend I made after coming to school, my best friend. Even though he gets scared more easily than others, he always gave it his all. He's kind to a fault, and he even put up with the horrible nickname Amaro that I gave him. I think everybody has some kind of horrible nickname. He's no longer here. I'm lonely. Sad. I can't tell. I don't know. I always kind of made fun of Kotaro. And, you know, in some ways, I kind of like not having him around. But at the same time, I grew, like, kind of close to him, you know? Especially, like, during this moment, we really grew... Uh, like, a strong connection, you know? Like, he really kind of sacrificed himself for us. Like, to help us complete this this ultimate goal we had of saving all the night students, right? Um, or saving the day students, I guess, from being taken over by the night students. Let's put it that way. But what I do know is that he stood strongly by his decisions and actions. His smile during his final moments told me that much. That's what you thought, huh, Omaru? My classmates happily chatter away as they exit the classroom. None of them know what really happened that night. Tomorrow chose to disappear, saying that it had to be this way. Being sad about what it about it would be rejecting his resolve. That being said, I have no intention of grinning and bearing it. Maybe I'm just not convinced yet. Tomorrow is gone. Maybe I simply haven't gotten used to that fact yet. <laughs> Oh, Kurodani. My classmates Kurodani Mai and Yoshida Sora. Yes, yes we are. Thank you. No, well, I guess it's pretty far. To explain his sudden disappearance, the students were told that he left for another school as part of a special bureau investigation. Yeah. Huh? 
いやそんなに素直に肯定するとは思わなかった。Well, it's interesting to know that's how you think of us. Really? I've been thinking about Amaro, so I ended up agreeing without putting much thought into it. Yeah. yeah, I think we'll be okay. Not as bad as you're making it out to be. Oh, thanks. They're really blowing things out of proportion. But really, you don't need to be so worried. I'm not. Did we get rid of the night room, though? Is, that, is it not appearing anymore? But they're still having to go back to their dorms early? Yeah, see you tomorrow. Hmm. I need to like learn more about kind of what the situation is right now. Prompted by a disciplinary committee member, I'm patrolling two of them hurry they leave. The committee member knows me, and so he simply gives a quick nod before heading off to the next classroom. Guess I'll get going too. Taking my bag and getting up from my seat to leave as well. Yeah, Miku. <sighs> Subaki. Subaki, Chan, are you making your rounds too? Going out to the hallway, run into Mibu Subaki, wearing her disciplinary committee coat. Her coat bears the emblem of the committee chair. How's being the temporary chair going? A lot of work. <laughs> the original chairwoman, Shogoin Momoka Senpai, someone I viciously hate, was meticulously sealed away after the incident the other day and is currently absent. Oh, thank goodness. She had to be sealed because she was actually homoculus that sided with the school. Homoculi dolls, created with magic that look exactly like humans, obey their creator's orders absolutely and won't listen to reason. I don't like that they're explaining what happened to her, because it makes me think they're gonna they're gonna bring her back. Like tomorrow, the students were told that Momo Senpai left a school for a special mission. And then th this woman right here. On that note, the principal is also a homoculus, fled after the incident. The story is that she's on a business trip abroad. Yeah, I'm sure she is scheming. Doing now is no different than what I did before. That's good. The only real difference is that uh, would be why she's doing it. Until recently, the school was linked to the realm of night during the nighttime with the help of a large scale magical spell. Ooh, okay, they're explaining it. Good. I was hoping they wouldn't make me wait. What in the. Uh is this a flashback to the first game? We already know this. There's literally a button on the home screen that has a recap, okay, if you want a recap of what's happened so far. Uh, just, you know. I'm sure, like, as this game was coming out, you know, that would have been helpful. But I'm like, I just played this not too long ago. I should remember most of it. Except for names. If I'm not using a name constantly, it goes straight out of my head. <laughs> the rule was that the regular students must be back in their dorms after classes before nightfall. Bucky Chan was one of the scapegoats, Maggie, who were responsible for the supplying of mana to the magic circle that summoned the night realm, but I know, I'm kinda glad she's not being like robbed of her school life again, you know? You see that uh that took quite a bit of your time, huh? Magic Circle was destroyed by me with the help of Muko and Amaro's mana. The night students who we thought were being summoned here from another world were actually day students with their souls replaced. That was quite the plot twist. Oh boy, 20 years ago a mysterious fire happened in the school. The true identity of those night students were the victims of the fire who are still missing to this day. The administration wanted to sacrifice the day students in order to revive the students of the past. After finding out what they that they wanted to permanently hijack the day students' bodies, we broke the magic circle to put a stop to their plans. And... Johnny. Oh, and then we lost Muko. Mara, who was actually one of the students for 20 years ago, disappeared that night. 
that was quite the twist too. Like, gosh, the, the second game was full of so many twists. I thought the first game was good. I really did. I thought the first game was was pretty awesome. And then the second game came and I'm like, the first game sucked. <laughs> the first game was like not nearly as good. Because uh, the second one just had so much stuff that built up. But you know, the first one was a stepping stone towards the second game. And the second one will be a stepping stone towards this one, which I hope is just as good. Because I'll be very excited. And then we had this plot twist right after. Gosh, there were so many. Freaking Omaru was actually Matsuki, the person we've been looking for the whole time? Oh, wild. He was occupying the body of Hanat Hanatate Mutsuki, who attended this school before us and I got missing. After Muko Shishigatani, Ushio suddenly lost contact with Hanatate, her best friend. She came to the school and met me and Amaro soon after we came here. But who would have thought the person she was looking for was right before her eyes the entire time? I know, that was such a good twist! Amaro was most likely an experimental guinea pig, being the, nights, the first night student to possess a day student, even during the day. Miku? I'm just waiting for them to reveal some other kind of twist about all that, all the stuff that happened. I feel like they're going to do something like that. Like, oh, you actually thought it was this way? It's this way. You know? He could have something the matter. Uh, oh, it's nothing. I'm just recalling every epic moment that just happened that was so good. I accidentally got lost in the memories. She looks at me, confused, and I force a smile. But with Miss continuing to pop up, I would have thought that you'd still be busy. Oh. In the back of the library, in the basement of the school, lies the treasury. It houses many magical tools known as mists. It goes without saying that mana is required to activate them, but there are also times when they will drain your physical strength or put you to sleep as compensation. For that reason, they're quite dangerous, since anyone could accidentally activate one and fall unconscious. Moreover, mists are naturally drawn to people who are troubled or having problems and thus escape the treasury. Retrieving and sealing the mist is the job of the Bureau for the investigation of special affairs. Wow, I can actually say that like correctly now. Which Muko and I belong to. I always laugh when I go back and watch uh, my first episodes. I just like struggle to like pronounce the name of the... <laughs> The special investigation for the special bureau. <laughs> I would always say something like that. It was so great. Like, I, I really wasn't, like, trying to do that on purpose. Like, I just... I didn't actually know the name, so I would just kind of fumble it. None of the ones uh, that showed up lately have been hard to deal with. Oh, boy. That'll change. Yeah, the last one we, was just a watering can that kept watering the garden. <laughs> can we just keep that one? I mean, that one seems harmless, but okay. Attracted by a sick gardening club member who was worried about the flowers. All of those wander around the garden, the one who activated it was their own their own room bedroom, and so it was sorted out quickly. It was probably draining that person's mana, so I guess we can't keep that forever. If only it was this easy all the time, but unfortunately that's not normally the case. Mists are more easily activated at night, so it's still safer for the students to be further from the school building and back in the dorms. Gotcha. Okay, that's why they're still, you know, sending them back. Perfect. Okay. I wanted an explanation for that. Although, I was the one who broke the barrier. We don't remember that, okay? <laughs> Mitsuyoshi, we deny it. We deny everything to begin with. Why didn't the school fix it? That way we'd have one less thing to worry about. That's a good question. Why didn't they fix it? I mean, we could go the, the route of maybe they couldn't fix it, or maybe they didn't know how. But, hmm, interesting. Yeah, they, maybe they could have fixed it and we could have solved this problem a long time ago. Uh, most likely. I'm yeah, bringing her along with me today. Your job, so don't worry about it. Thanks for all the hard work you put in. Thank <laughs> So I guess he's bringing Matsuki to the office with him. That's the only person I can think of. I yeah, see you. We go our separate ways and I first head to my room in the East Storm. Uh, Frick, what do, what do you say when you enter? Uh, Tadaima? Is that, is that, I'm, I'm home? Still sleep, uh-huh. Still sleep, huh? 
There we go. That That's how you say that sentence. I return to my room and put my bag on the floor. Oh, it's Michiru. I guess we're bringing her. Where's Matsuki then? What, what's going on with Matsuki? I was wondering um, why he would be going to his room, but Michiru, my little sister, is in my bed quietly snoring. She suddenly appeared out of nowhere on the night that we destroyed the magic circle. That's true. That's a really good, accurate description of what happened. Because I was confused by that. I was like, what the hell? Who is this? <laughs> Since birth, she had an immense amount of mana. However, she's never been able to control it very well. Hmm. Sounds similar to someone at the start of the game. Hmm. Because of that, a lot of painful things have happened. That's why I much prefer that she doesn't use it. School's invitation was originally addressed to Mitru. I thought it was fishy and enrolled in her stead, but that night she ended up releasing an unbelievable amount of mana, transporting herself here from our home in an instant. Ever since then, she's been living in my room. I say living, but she's been asleep practically the entire time. It's probably because of how much mana she used. She's not a student of the school and the administration doesn't know about her, so for now I'm hiding her here so that she can recover. Having said, she's more or less healed up now. I'd hate to disturb her while she's sleeping so peacefully, but I don't have a choice. I don't know. I'm wondering if they're going to kind of touch on that. I think having her here is not a great idea. I think that they wanted to have her in their control, or at least have her in their, um, their kind of watch, because I think they were going to use her power. So... We're going to see how that goes. I don't think this is a great decision. I think she's kind of going to be instrumental in whatever their plan is to kind of revive, you know, some of these students. We'll see. We'll see. I'd hate to disturb her while she's sleeping so peacefully, but I don't have a choice. Hey, Mitru, wake up. Go on, get up. She sits up rubbing her eyes. She gazes at me tired and half asleep. At a glance, she looks to be in good health. We're having a meeting with everyone in the bureau office to summarize all that's happened. Think you can come? She nods. Are you feeling well enough to? Well, is Matsuki going to at least be there? I thought that's who he was talking about, but, you know, this probably makes more sense. She's been asleep in my room the majority of the time, so she's never gotten the chance to properly introduce herself either. Apparently she wants to do that uh, despite being quite a shy person. Change into this, then. This is school's uniform. All the regular students are back in the dorms, but there are still disciplinary committee members in the school. You don't want them to realize at a glance you're not a student here. Something wrong. Oh, no. Oh, no. We have the little sister character here now. Oh, my bad. Of course. She's my sister, so it never crossed my mind, but she still is a girl. Come out after you're done, though. Hearing an unhappy voice from behind me, I quickly make my way out of my room. Oh, boy. <gasps> Shizuka! Shizuka's definitely, like, one of the characters that, like, became my favorites, for sure. I mean, I've always kind of liked him, I always kind of teased him, you know? I enjoyed that we did tease him, but... I don't know, he's become a, a pretty reliable person at times. Sang Yura! <laughs> nope, still gonna call you that. Stepping out of the hallway, what if the bureau's Aaron boy? <laughs> An extra disgrace committee member. Murakumo Shizuka. <sighs> He's changing in the school uniform now. I got one from Subaki chan. <laughs> Did you come to pick us up or something? <laughs> They still haven't changed these, or did you just find out the new ones? I'm sure are kind when it comes to Mishiru. I don't know what moving away from Subaki chan to our sister? I don't know, how, how are we going to take this? I don't know if Mitsuyoshi is going to feel kindly about the errand boy trying to get with his sister, you know? Sure, sure. I didn't mention him and the others I'd be secretly housing Mitsuru in my room, and I'd bring her along for a proper introduction once she felt better. After telling him yesterday that she seems to be doing pretty well now, he decided to go out of his way and meet us here. I guess he's like her guardian now. According to what Mitsuru told me, she was meeting with Murako in the dream world prior to teleporting herself here. Apparently he thought that she was the manifestation of a mist, but he kept her company because of how awkward she was. 
His diligence knows no bounds. It's like he picked up a stray cat and now he can't leave it alone. It's only rude to you. I never said anything. You got bald if you keep stressing over this kind of stuff. Yeah, I know. You wouldn't want to lose your beautiful shrimp hair. I guess I haven't thanked you yet. You took care of her while I was in the hospital for my checkup. Thanks for that. Ah, oh, I forgot that's canon. Oh no. I always forget the stuff like that's supposed to be canon. You happily coming out of your way to pick us up is just creepy. She said that she is, and she looks fine to me. Once the incident was over, she didn't wake up for a few days, and after she did, she still spent the majority of her time sleeping. I only started considering her as being back to normal about two days ago. For what it's worth, she also slept a lot when she was younger. I don't think we've gotten an actual, like, indication of how old he is. 20. Okay, so he's not that much older. I mean... <laughs> Hell yeah. Is he gonna realize that we're, like, you know, the, the older senpai here, so that he needs to give us some respect? Okay. Look at Japanese culture, you have to like talk respectfully to people that are older than you. I'm like, screw them. I'm not gonna talk to you just because you're older. I'm not gonna treat you more nicely. Uh, respect is earned, okay? Please don't, it's always hard not to laugh. I mean, I think you can be polite to people. Like, you shouldn't just be mean to people, you know, just because they're younger or older. But like... Showing someone, like, real respect, like, I do genuinely think that's earned. I don't think you should just respect somebody because of, you know, stuff like that. Like, just because they're older. Uh, you know, if someone's not going to treat you nicely, like, don't treat them badly, but you don't need to, like, go out of your way to really exalt them, right? Hell yeah. Sister, best character? If there's not a sister out, we don't play the rest of the game. If I find out, we just quit then and there. How do you change the uniform? Meet your steps out of my room. Okay, well, no, I'm joking about that, by the way. Uh, it just so happens that most of the games I played, you have a sister out. Uh, and I blame you guys, because you're the ones always suggesting. I mostly play suggestions for games, okay? I think, like, almost every game i played has been a suggestion, like, in the past, like, year, or, you know? Uh, most of the recent ones, at least. Uh, but you guys are always making me play ones that have a sister route. Doesn't seem particularly surprised that Earthworm is here with me. Which, which I can't complain about, because I've seemingly started to like them. And I can't believe I'm saying that. I've actually started to like some of the sister routes, because they're pretty interesting. I mean, I can't say the ones that I've done so far have been, like... It's like, oh, you're just trying to get with your sister, you know, like, uh, Alabama Roll Tide, you know? Like, they've actually been, like, genuinely good in the way they've, like, presented them. Like, they're not just regular, you know, just trying to get with our sister kind of thing. Anyways, we're moving on from this. I I've talked enough about sisters, okay? I don't even have a sister, so... I wasn't particularly surprised that Mercury was here with me. Yo, yo, <laughs> we were right in front of the door, after all. Let's get going. We don't want to draw any attention to ourselves, especially from people like Kuradani. <laughs> uh, Kuradani. We chase after him as he briskly sets off. With him leading the way, we head to the bureau office via a bit of a detour, trying our best to avoid any different committee members. Mitra looks around with curious eyes since it's the first time she's been outside of my room. Mitra, you're heading back home after the meeting, okay? Huh? You heard me. Now that you're feeling better, there's no need to keep for you to keep hiding in my room. Oh, we can't send her home. She's part of the cast now. Not the problem here. You got your own school to attend. 
I did call them to say that you were sick, but you can't be absent forever. Oh gosh, she's a sister that just does whatever she wants. It is. What about... What's this about you skipping school? Why didn't you go? So we got the socially awkward sister that would rather, you know, spend time at home. Are you a neat? Is that what you're trying to be? You're trying to be a neat here? You need to overcome that shyness of yours. After all this time, you still haven't gotten to know your classmates. She seems to have suddenly remembered that Murakuma is here with us in her eyes wide as she covers her mouth with her hands. Hey, yo, are you into him? Excuse me. She then hides behind me, bashfully casting her eyes at the ground. Like you two are completely different people. Look at these two lovebirds, though. Okay, looking away from each other, kind of embarrassed, all like. <laughs> She you know, shows no restraint when she's talking to me, and she's embarrassed that, uh, that that was exposed. Does she not remember that everyone has already figured that out when she first came here? That's a completely slipped her mind. Probably because of how overcome with rage she was. Murakuma looks like he's regretting what he said. Don't we all? It'd make things a lot easier for me if she'd just go home. Although given her attitude, it doesn't look like, look like she will. Good grief. It's way more fun having a sister character, though. <sighs> Upon entering the library down in the basement, Mitra looks at the humongous bookshelves in awe. Come to think of it, I reacted the same way my first time here, but I've gotten pretty used to it by now. I don't see Rido. Is she further inside? Would have been nice to have her meet Mitru, but that can wait until later. This way, Mitru. Uh, mm. She jogs up to me and grabs my sleeve, not wanting to get lost. Ah, oh, we got the good old tea set in here. Hey. Entering the bureau office, I see that everyone's here aside from Subaki John. Kita, kita. Yoho! Yoho! The moment I step inside Murakuma's sister, Sumi chan, Murakuma costume me, greets me and waves. She's never been a normal student at the school, and she was tasked with being the sole scapegoat before Subaki chan started helping out. As a result, she's always been avoiding others so that neither the day nor night students would see her, but we became acquainted after a certain incident. They're now working together. Yeah, she's got a lot going on now. By the way, Subaki chan was already on good terms with her before the incident, now they're best of friends. Some might even say more than friends. Adelheid's still here, let's go! Okay, I'm so glad. Does that mean Louis's still here? I'm really excited. I wasn't sure if they were gonna be in this, you know? Uh, I was a little bit concerned. Pretty European girl uh, looking around the room and counting heads is Adelheid, or Heidi for short. She's the head of the Weinbergers, prestigious family in Germany. Is she? That's the story, at least. Yeah, I'm like. Louis! <sighs> Let's go! <laughs> the truth is that the actual head of the family is the sharp-tongued butler. Ah, oh, so good. So good. The big guy hidden under Louis' eye patch houses a power of the Maggie that is passed down from generation to generation within the family. In order to protect that, Heidi pretends to be the head. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love his deadpan responses. For the record, Muko, Marakuma, and I am the only ones who know about that Louis is the true master in this relationship. <laughs> Damn, I mean, she's right. I 
You would think that Louis' foul mouth comes from being in a position of power, but having spent time with the two, I've come to realize it's a personality issue. <laughs> Last but not least, one rendered utterly speechless by this exchange is Shishika, Tani Ushio, or Muko as I like to call her. Our first impressions of each other weren't good, but after everything that's happened, we get along as fellow members of the Bureau, and well, you could say that holds a special place in my heart. Michiru-san, are I would also say they've gotten together pretty well, uh, considering I've seen seen some of the eight scenes they have together, as well as some of the after story eight scenes they've had together. <laughs> Ichiro makes a strange noise when Muko calls out to her. It was very strange. Muko's eyes wide and troubled by her s my sister's reaction. Uh, Don't worry about it, she's just super shy. <laughs> Luka looks like she has something to say, but she keeps quiet and turns away from me. This isn't something unusual. It's her being able to separate her public and private affairs and not having her personal feelings cloud her judgment, but she can be damn confusing at times. Hell yeah. In the hospital? I think they honestly have gotten quite into it before, to put it mildly. That's uh, been put on hold for now. We decided that dealing with the school's conspiracy and all the various incidents here comes first, but I get the feeling there's more to it than that. She tends to overthink things at times like these. We've come, we've, we're close enough. It, you know, English is hard, guys. We're close enough that I can understand that much, or at least I think I do. Um, uh, the way she's looking at the fidgety Michiru doesn't seem any different than usual. I don't think she doubts me, but uh, don't tell me that she's jealous because Michiru clings to me so much. It does sound a bit cute, though. Oh my gosh, are you the kind of guy who's gonna pit your freaking love interest against your sister? <sighs> this is definitely not the time to question her about that. Nah. Uh... Hell yeah, he's trained. Being awfully thoughtful today, Shizuka-chan. Oh, okay. You know, I at least respect Shizuka enough that he's going after our sister instead of, you know, trying to go after his sister. Nah. <laughs> Walks over to a chair and sits as if to show that she's not scared. It doesn't seem like either of them are in love with the other. It's okay, we've come to expect that from her. <laughs> Oh, I love that he's just back there muttering to himself. He grumbles as he serves the tea, brood. Yeah, the best way to describe the relationship is a guy and his friend's cat that he's looking after. I sip some tea and take a deep breath when Tsubaki chan walks in. Yeah, <laughs> Muka stands up after waiting for Tsubaki chan to sit down. All of our eyes are on her. Alright, let's do a little bit of a recap here. Muka looks around and resumes speaking after seeing all of us nod. まず、この学園で最も大掛かりな魔術。夜の世界の召喚。それは異世界を召喚していると学園側は主張していましたが。これは実は20年前の生徒たちの魂を今の時代の西寮の生徒の体に憑依させ下ろす儀式でした。夜の世界の召喚はあれ以来起こっていません。夜の生徒たちも現れていません。Uro Yamashi Neko, Shishiban Hina Senpai, Iba Kumiko, 
Kumiko-senpai, Kasuga Mayumi, there were several night students who we got to know very well due to various incidents. The most shocking part of all was that Amara was one of them. Where is she at, though? I don't know. Is she still is she like in a coma or something? I mean, I'm just surprised we haven't seen her. I mean, maybe I'm just misremembering what. Maybe they've already explained this. Is she a Didn't you wish to come to school? Yes, that's true. Even now, I can clearly remember the look of horror on Muko's face when Amaru disappeared. Not that I can blame her. She was prepared to accept that Hanatate Mutsuki was dead, but in reality, she was safe and they reunited in that fashion. ですが夜の生徒たちは遺体すら見つからず行方不明扱いになっている生徒ばかりですこれはどういうことなのか死んでいないのではないか可能性はあると思いますクラルラズリットは時を操るマギエですありえるでしょうね yeah, I'm thinking they were trapped in some kind of stasis, maybe, but I'm not too sure on that. Frau Lazaric, the founder of the school, and as Heidi said, a female Maggie with a unique power. It's said that she also lost her life in that fire 20 years ago. ええ、それが可能なのであれば。火事で亡くなった他の生徒やラズリット本人も全員降ろそうとするのではないかと行方不明になった生徒だけが何らかの形で火事を免れ学園長たちは異常なほどそいつらの復活にこだわってましたね学園長や将軍先輩のようなホムンクルスの存在それに夜の生徒たちの魂を定着させるための大量のラズリットブロッドストーンあの魔石はラズリットにしか生成できないやはりこの件にはクラールラズリットが深く関わっていると考えざるを
だからなんか事情があるかその意思を曲げられちゃうような事態が起きたかなんかあったんじゃないそこも含めて全てを究明したいのです何より20年前の生徒たちが本当にまだ亡くなっていないのならうんそれは一番大事だ伊庭さんやひなさん風呂山町さん春日さんそれにカラスマくんみんな助けられるかもしれない助けると言っても以前のようにまたここへ通えるようになるわけではないのでは Of course not. They'd probably be pretty confused if they're suddenly thrown 20 years in the future. Because of the hypnosis magic that was applied to them by the school, they were oblivious to the fact that so many years had passed. None of them found it strange that they were attending school at night. They didn't know what they were doing during the day. Saving them would mean sending them back to their own time. So, if you know what you are doing, you will be able to do it. But, if you are not going to do it, you will be able to do it. If you are not going to do it, you will be able to do it. If you are not going to do it, you will be able to do it. If you are not going to do it, you will be able to do it. If you are not going to do it, you will be able to do it. If you are not going to do it, you will be able to do it. If you are not going to do it, you will be able to do it. If you are not going to do it, you will be able to do it. Like they were just kind of held, you know, for 20 years. Like they're, they're not like still in the past. They were just kind of, uh, kind of like a chirogenic sleep, you know? Like if you like froze them in ice, that kind of thing. I mean, I think that's better than them dying or just, you know, not getting to, to live their life. <sighs> それしかない行方不明のままよりはマシだと思いますけれまだわかんねえだろ助けて20年前に戻す方法だってあるかもしれねえんだから I mean I could definitely see them doing that like kind of having like a reunion with Amaro and then like oh I need to go back to my own time pretty much killing him again almost <laughs> kind of like he was dying but I don't know I could see them doing that, like having kind of like a, another, re, you know, last reunion before like they send them back to the past 20 years.、Uh, and then maybe we get to see an older version of him. That would be cool.、Uh, that would be, you know, something out of like a Marvel movie or something, you know? That would be awesome. Worrying about it now is pointless. So, this is it. So, no time anyway. Yeah, how do you know? No, I'm not sure. 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 それを調べるために皆さんに協力してほしいのです。I mean, we should have pretty easy access to the whole school now. I wonder if they can find some more documents about that. ああ、もちろん依存はないよ。私も。私もです。このまま引き下がるだなんて、目覚めの悪い幕切れはごめんですから。ね、ルイ？いや、へ、当然だな。大体このまま放っといたら学園長たちはまたやらかすだろう。Probably, but I, ha I have a feeling they have something else up their sleeve. I think they have something even more、uh, dastardly. Is that, is that the word I'm looking for? They haven't given up on trying to take over the bodies of the day students. Because they're homoculi, they were probably ordered to do this and won't consider any other methods. また仕掛けてくるでしょうね。Yeah, we need to uncover the truth to prevent that. <laughs> Of course, it's true.、Hey. I can't believe she said that in front of this many people when she's so shy. She really doesn't want to leave. It's not fine at all, but if I force her to go home, I get the feeling that she'd find some way to pop back here. It doesn't look like I can do anything about this. Suddenly, I hear the door opening. Oh, <laughs> It's freaking Matsuki. <laughs> And she has a little cow thing on her. <laughs> I'm guessing it's supposed to be Matsuki. I see Hanatate Matsuki coming flying in. Okay, I was wondering where she was. I'm glad they're showing her. And we get this cute CGI, of course. Fuku springs to her feet surprised. Wait, that hairpin. It's holding back her bangs. The same as how Amaro had it.
Her shoulder length hair is also tied up as if to match the way Amara looked. I like how she introduces herself like that. That was Zipe that salutes. Then Bully Oh yeah, the bureau is getting big. Joining, all of us are flabbergasted. It seems that Muko hadn't heard about this either. It seems that I've noticed my stare and months her fingers only my hair. これは、カラスマくんの分まで頑張りたいからっていう私なりの決意っていうか、あと、こうしてればモーちゃんたちもちょっとでも一緒にいる気分になってくれるかなって思ったんだけど。I still haven't gone back and looked to see if that, um, that time when he got, like, dunked into that pool, like, if that ended up being similar to what Masuki looked like. I think it was. I think it was really similar. Very interesting. だ、ダメだったかな余計寂しくなるんだったらすぐ外すよ must have been more surprised than she was expecting. I start laughing how uh, flustered she is. Thanks, I'm sure Omar would be happy about it. そっか! A broad smile breaks out on her face. She's stuck in an awkward position, after all. She's able to return, but in exchange, we lost Omar. She tried her best to deal with that, but this is the conclusion she came to. Mutsuki? それはいいのですけれど。Right, more importantly, Hanatate's son. Mutsuki でいいよ! She tilts her head quizzically and continues talking. あ、でもカラスマくんのことはオマルって呼んでたんだよね。じゃあ私のことはうんとオムツ？オムツ？That's a hell of a lot of worse than Amaru. ダメですそんなの。女の子なのに。It's an interesting sprite. をつけるのが伝統かなって思ったんだけど。you don't have to completely replicate everything. That's right. Why is she so fixated on She reminds me a lot of Kasumi. How was I supposed to know that this would happen? That's right. Is that what I was Oh gosh, is Matsuki going to be the first uh, route we get to go down? I I'm just getting that vibe. I mean, it would make sense. She's a new character, right? Like, we can naturally fall in love with her, right? <laughs> so she wasn't aware of it herself. Yeah, doesn't look like we're gonna get anywhere unless I give her a nickname. Is this not at all weird to anybody else that she's trying to, like, take over Omaru's place? I mean, I understand that she kind of was Omaru in a way, and Omaru was her, but I don't know. That's just kind of weird that she's trying to fill in this gap for us. Look at staring daggers at me, implying she won't forgive me if I come up with something weird. Well then, how about, uh, Mooch? Butchan? The girls come to consensus, trying their hardest to prevent her from being a Mutsu. <laughs> Looks like she's content with that. Ugh. <laughs> Relieved that we got rid of the bad nickname, Muko clears her throat as she finally regains control of the conversation. あなた特裁に入るつもりですかうん、そう言ったでしょどうしてですどうしてって、もーちゃんたちはこれから20年前に何が起きたのか調べるんでしょ だったら私にも手伝わせてよ。私はカラスマくんに助けてもらったようなものだから、今度は私が助けたいんだ。ムツキ。ね。いいでしょ。本当だったら学園長の許可とかいるんだろうけど、今いないしね。いないどころか敵
wow, okay. I do like her in the sense that she's a little bit more enthusiastic than Amaro was. A little bit less of a crybaby, you know? She seems like she speaks for herself a little bit more. Hadatate thrust her index finger forward, interrupting the words. まだこの学園の魔術に関わって首突っ込んで解決しようとしてる。<笑> Yeah, I don't think there's any reason we can't all work together. Oh yeah, she started attending the school before us, which would explain why she already knows Tsubaki-chan. Alright. She tries her best to separate herself from her fawning friend. I think I have an idea of the hierarchy between these two now. Oh, yeah, we are, Louis. We're all in this together, you know? I'm really glad, though, that she's got her friend back. I mean, like, like let's just look at... Oh, hold up. I gotta change this to uh, hide text box. There we go. I was trying to hide the text box, and I opened that up. Uh, like, let, let's just look at this real quick. I mean, look how happy Matsuki is, and then look how content Muko is. It's like, she's very clearly happy to have her friend back, so I'm happy for her. Looks like it. よろしくね。花立さん。え、あ、はい。えっと。あ、そっか。私とかハイジちゃんとかは初対面だった。忘れんなよ。<笑> Oh yeah, there's one more person you practically never met. Misha tries to tilt her body diagonally in order to hide behind me by grab her. I grab the back of her neck and reposition her upright. We're, we're like treating her like a little puppy. She's an extremely shy person. This is normal for her, so don't worry about it. She hides her head and lets out a strange sound. I'm not sure whether she was a. That was a sigh or a sob. That was the saddest Konnichiwa I've ever heard. Konnichiwa。改めて、お互い自己紹介しよう。それが良さそうだな。はい、じゃあ改めて、初めまして。花田て、ムツキです。モーちゃんとは親友で、えっと、この前まで行方不明になってました。Sure. いや、that's、that's the shocker. Yeah, that was quite the twist because it was hard to guess. Um you know, their whole plan was to, like, do that to all the night students, but little did we know they already successfully did it on one of them. I wonder if we're going to have more twists related to that. I wonder if more people we know are actually going to be something else. Because, I don't know, with the Night Realm being gone, does that necessarily mean that anybody else who was in a similar situation would not be in that anymore? I don't know. I was planning on applying this to all the night students on the day of the eclipse a few days ago, but we printed that from happening. Oh, okay, so it's only been a few days. I was also wondering about that. I don't think they really gave, like, a super great idea of how long it's been. But I don't know. And I'd like to believe that there's some other kind of twist. Like, maybe somebody else we know is, is something other than they seem, but... What we'll to see? Okay, Louis, what would you like to confirm? What? あなたが先にこの学園へ入学し、そして行方不明になったので、牛尾がそれを探しにやってきたという経緯です。That sounds correct to me. 
そうだよムツキとはここに来る以前からの親友です信頼が受けることは保証しますあ、そうだそうです。About things are a bit complicated when it comes to Lumi and Heidi. They want to be absolutely sure that they can trust Hanata. わかりました。ではフラウ、こちらの事情もお話ししておくべきかと存じます。そうね。お互い隠し事はなしにしましょう。I like how much they've opened up to us. Like clearly they want to make sure they can like trust new people that are being introduced. So they just nearly, you know, they merely ask and then they. They trust us enough to trust them. But I'm sure I did it. I thought. Oh, my dear, 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 my もめるのは後にしてください。ああ、そうね。失礼しました。では、改めて。I always loved their relationship.、Uh, I didn't really guess that Louis was the head of the family because I feel like they just had strong, a strong enough relationship that Louis like, felt comfortable kind of like talking back against his master, you know, that kind of thing.、Uh, and, and they kind of already talked about how they like, grew up together and things like that. So, you know, I just thought maybe they were just comfortable, right? Uh, I kind of brushed it off as that, but then you know, the reveal of Louis actually being like the head of the family, it all made sense.、Uh, I really liked how they did that. It, it was just one of those situations where it wasn't like obvious to me、uh, that it, things were a different way. So it was really a surprise when it came to it. And I feel like that we've had a lot of those so far. Like, there's a lot of things that have happened where I just I wouldn't have guessed it. But it all made sense when it happened. It wasn't like just out of left field. It wasn't like, oh, you, you would have never been able to figure this out otherwise. But there were so many hints towards things that you maybe could have figured it out,、uh, which, is, which is awesome. I, I really love that you can figure out a lot of things in this story. Like, they don't just bring them out of left field, you know, totally un.、Uh, something you could never understand unless you had, you know, all the proper knowledge about. They have a lot of twists like that. I think those are the best ones to have, so I really appreciate that. Ludovic Hilita von Weinberger to Moshimas. Omotemukiwa Bunke no Dede, Shitsuji to Yukoto Nat Dorimas. But Taxiwa, Homo no no Tosh of Mamor Tameni, Omotani Tatirino. Kogemusha to Yuno da Tokashira. Oi, Kusats Nanda, ne? Kedo Mamor te Nanka ni Nerawarete Tarisuruno? 狙われているというより、背負っているものが強大すぎるゆえというところでしょうか。この目は義眼です。そしてこれは、本物のマギエであった先祖の力を封じ込めたマグナのです。当家は代々、これを受け継いできました。フラウは、表のバインベルガー家のなりわいである、香水の調合に長けております。バインベルガーって聞いたことあると思ったら有名な香水ブランドだそうよでも市販されているのは普通の香水だけですけれどね本当に受け継いできた秘伝は魔術で調合したもの感知をそらしたり暗示をかけたり用途はいろいろねへえー、すごーい You two sure gave us a lot of trouble with those perfumes of yours まったくだ Oh,、uh, we're having a good flashback to that. We all start feeling tired after, the, after being reminded of the mess they caused when they first arrived. Never want to go through that again. Sugita koto de shu? Mizuni nagaste kada saranai? Mome de iru bai de wa harimasen kara ne? To yu wake desu no de. Mina sama mo, dozo frau no ho o ojo sama to yu te de onegai shimasu. I love that he can't control himself when, he com when it comes to saying something like, that, something like that. He always has to like throw a little bit of an extra thing there at the end. Like, you know, treat her as the head of the family, even though she's probably not capable of acting like it. Like, he has to always like have some downside to it. <laughs> yeah, he always adds some unnecessary last part to it, and it's great. Sure. 
Sumi-chan cuts into their argument and energetically raises her hand. ラクモ やっぱまだサボってんなこら。なって。今まで出てなかったのに急に教室行くのってまあまあ勇気いるんだよ。Does I mean, she still have a uniform? She's always wearing like this dress, but kind of looks like she's like getting ready to take a nap. まったく。あ、それと静香は私の双子の弟ね。はい、次シーちゃん。俺かよ。なあ。村久保静香元風紀委員だそれだけ他に何か言うことあったかタシリユラ He's taking responsibility for trying to be the villain. それがね、しーちゃんってば。ああ、詳しく言うな。長くなりすぎるわ。俺がやらかしてそのバツとして徳差で働いて借りを返すことになったんだよ。それでいいだろ。まあ、長い話になってしまうのは確かですからね。いず
As a result, everyone knows me as Koga Michiru, so please go along with that as well. Okay. Like Muko, I'm also a member of the Bureau. That's all I got. Oh, so Oh, we're just gonna mention that to everybody now. Twenty. So much older than me. Isn't there a meme about twenty? Uh, like how how old are you? I'm twenty. I don't remember that meme. It's like vaguely on the tip of my tongue. To come as this much as of a surprise. I mean, to be fair, isn't he like the tallest though? I mean, he definitely looks like he's a little bit older. Oh, shut up! I'm only a year off. Oh my gosh. Guys, you don't have to be so Japanese, it's okay. No, no, it's fine. Please don't treat me any differently than you have until, up until now. She's probably vaguely remembering her route right now. Yeah. It's a lot more shocking to them than I thought it would be. It's never even crossed my mind that I was already well into adulthood. I mean, you're like, barely older. Not a big deal. Oh, this here is Michiru. <laughs> Come on, don't freeze up. It's weird hearing her say that, because, you know, like Koga said before, we just kind of associated him as Koga Michiru. She says that in a barely audible voice and bows. As you can see, she's awful at interacting with others, so I'd appreciate it if you could cut her some slack. But it's the truth! Yeah, she definitely has the power, but she passes out when she uses it, so don't rely on her too much. It's fine, don't push yourself like that. Please don't uh, do anything unless you really have no choice. Yeah, it's not like you're here. I think they're already aware, because they already were looking at us, thinking we were the the uh, the Maggie, right? And since they realized that it wasn't us. They like kind of brushed it off. It's like, oh, we were mistaken. But I think they still have an inkling of an idea uh, that it's actually our sister. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. Mitra comes to terms with it and immediately agrees. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they already recognize that or if they're gonna find that out really soon. Pretty much hoping that we manage to resolve everything uh, without her having to use her power. So, this is はい。なんです。えっと、ごめんね。ちょっと失礼なことなんだけど、ルイさんって男性。ルイ<笑> ルイの適性がそれだけ高かった証でもあるんです。そうですか。えっと、すみません。立ち入ったことまで聞いちゃって。いえ、お気になさらず、隠し事はしないという約束でしたから。そっか。ありがとうございます。I mean, I am glad that they kind of explained that later because I was like, should I be calling Louis a male or a female? I'm like, I don't know. ところで。お二人はドイツへ戻らなくてもだ。え。この件が片付くまでは滞在します。先ほども申し上げた通り、ここで引き下げるつもりはございません。そうですか。では、頼りにします。でで、ゲットバックアウトラスティア。でで、ライト。日
No, it's not. So -so -so I have no clue. 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 I have I am looking forward to figuring out what exactly her power is, because I feel like that's going to be kind of a twist. なるほど。まあ、ゲートしての意見を言わせてもらえれば、彼女の力を頼るのは危険です。危険。まず、能力を使った後に寝込むというのは持っている魔力の強さに対して器が追いついていないという証拠です。私が毎日力を使って倒れ
ぬか喜びさせるつもりはありません。形になったら連絡しますのでお待ちください。わかりました。Okay, yeah, that sounds good to me. Luca doesn't pry into any further, fully aware that when Louis is like this, he's not going to answer any questions. Heidi, however, is sulking beside her butler. Deva, Mina san, Yoroshiko Onegai Shimas. Okay, Makasate. Gambano, ne? Ah, Nanto Stedemo, Shinso Otskitomeo. Well, I'll head back first to put me sure to bed. Wodaijini. And with that, today's meeting was adjourned, and we all went our separate ways. Night time, huh? Carrying the sleeping meter on my back, I walk back to the dorms. Luka said that there was some other material she wanted to go through and remained in the library. Sumi Chan had something she just wanted to talk about with Murakumo, so it's just us two. School is deserted since the district committee is done with their rounds for the day. I think the one thing that we haven't touched on yet that I'm kind of curious. Uh, okay, so I guess there is still those spires. I don't know why I thought those were new, but it seems that there still is spires in the modern day. Um, I was just trying to get an idea of when the school burned down, if it had already happened at that point. I mean, I'm assuming it hadn't. Uh, the one thing we haven't touched on is is Rito. We mentioned that Rito wasn't there, and I don't think we ever found her. Uh, so I wonder what she's up to. I'm kind of worried that she's maybe getting roped into the principal's plot, or or something happened to her. Because uh, I noticed she wasn't in the library. We kind of like mentioned her, and then we never saw her, as far as I'm a, I remember. Winds uh, sows as it blows through the campus. Nitro gently stirs. Oh, it's nice having our sister around. Oh, you're finally awake. You were caught trying to cross the border, weren't you? Raises her head and looks around to examine her surroundings. Yeah, you woke up in the world of Skyrim. Yeah, go back to sleep. It's already over for today. No, that's not it. There was something. Uh, there was nothing more to talk about. I actually think we covered quite a lot. That meeting was really long. <laughs> yeah, so don't sweat it. She doesn't respond after that. I didn't feel her nodding either. I'm sure she's mulling over it. She probably feels awkward about it since she said all that stuff about helping her out, but ended up falling asleep early. Sleep early. Uh, she wants to give some sort of excuse, but she can't find the right words for it. It's not kind of silence. Really, there's no need to push yourself so hard. It's not like we're trying to exclude you or treat you like an outsider. You get that, don't you? Right, so you don't need to worry about something like that. Yeah. Her power going rampant. Both of us are painfully aware of what Louie mentioned. Yeah, we should consider ourselves lucky that it was Murakumo who you met in the dream world. Who knows what would have happened if she ran into someone like the principal instead. I don't know if a similar thing could happen to Himakuli, but I heard that she was in the dream world too when we went, so I can't discount it entirely. You managed to transport yourself all the way here because you wished for it, right? Can't you hold yourself back? それはずるい。まあ、fair。Yeah, I see. You're right. I think back to Miko's expression at the time and smile Riley. I'm probably making the same expression now. It's a good thing that Mitri is on my back right now so she can't see my face. Sorry, I guess we're both in fault. So, so yeah, it's out of the question. If she asked me not to worry about her, then it'd be, it'd be an unreasonable request. Alright, I won't ask you to go home right away anymore, but at least promise me that you won't recklessly try to use your power. <laughs> That would help a lot. 
I'm hoping that she never has to use it. No, she mustn't use it. I don't want to experience a repeat of that. Interesting. After that, a week passed with neither progress nor incident. Oh, that's a long time. Interesting. So we're doing a little bit of a time jump already. This is more time than has passed since the, uh, the second game. Anyways, I think we're going to end it off here. I think this is a really good introduction to the beginning of the third game. I think we had a lot of discussion, a lot of um, ideas of maybe what we're going to see coming up soon. So I think I really am looking forward to that. I think there's a lot of uh, mystery right now, though. Uh, we, we don't have an idea of what happened to the principal. Uh, I think there's the, the thing about Mitru's power. We don't really know what's going on with that. Uh, we need to find Omaru. We kind of had that little introduction there with us kind of dozing off and then, you know, finding that note. We need to, like, find him, right? Uh, we need to figure out, you know, the rest of the mysteries of the school, what happened 20 years ago. There's a lot to look forward to right now. I mean, I'm really excited for this. I think they really ended off on the, such a strong note with the uh, the second story here, Daybreak of Remnant Shadows, and then I think uh, a flower... What is it? A flower falling in the mist? Or, or, or uh, flowers falling in the morning mist. That's what it is. Uh, I think this is going to be a really strong third game and uh, conclusion to the series. So I'm absolutely, absolutely looking forward to that. And uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to it as much as I am. So I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one.